Hey everyone, it's Kong, and I've got something a little bit different for you in this video. I'm going to do a first impressions pass-through of Goddess of Genesis S. This is the next game from Zilong Games, who are the developers of Langrisser. And you know I make a lot of Langrisser content. So I thought I would check this game out and just kind of see what's familiar, what Zilong Games has reused, and what's new and different. So before walking through all the different modes, I will say two things that are fairly important here. This game is not going to appeal to everyone who likes Langrisser just because of Zilong Games. A lot of people who like Langrisser, like me, really enjoy it because it's a tactical, strategic, grid-based, map-based game. This is more of a traditional RPG almost, like it has just kind of RPG slash auto battle type battles. There's no real tactics. And the second thing is, a lot of the people who like Langrisser like it because of the IP. They are familiar with the original Langrisser games. This is something different entirely. The characters are based off different mythological traditions, or fictional traditions. So it's not necessarily going to appeal to everyone coming over from Langrisser or Zilong Games fans necessarily. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and go through the different game modes. Um, just to kind of take a peek at what everything is. So the first, I guess the main game mode is this story, uh, or adventure mode they call it here. And this really looks like a... Kind of like, um, Timeless Trial. No, not Timeless Trials, what am I talking about? Time Rifts. Yeah, it looks like Time Rifts, a mix of Time Rifts and Story Mode. You have your normal mode where you go through, like, five battles and there's little battles or sub things in between and then there's an elite mode where it's like harder versions of all the things and you have your treasure chests down here so you get extra treasures depending on if you three star all the different stages so that's very run of the mill and that's going to be your uh, main progression in the game then when you get to a certain point you have um, this challenges menu and this is going to be kind of like the secret realm in Langrisser. So you have this uh, Astral Shore where you can get gear, so that's kind of like the Goddess Trials where you fight the dragons for gear. You have uh, Grand Cook-Off for level up items. They're not potions in this game, they're food. So that's kind of like Angelica's Training Ground. Uh, you have the Slime Trove, which is kind of like the goblins where you just fight them to get gold. And then there's this one I don't have unlocked yet, Phantom of the Opera, where you get packed gifts. That sounds like it's probably like the bonding stages to get bonding materials. And then I'm not sure yet what mithril coins and different rare items and badge drops are. I assume they're like the kind of eternal temple slash whatever else is in there. You know, all your different various resources that you use to upgrade your characters, basically. So they're all in here. There's also uh, what they're calling timed challenges, and these are things that are based on the actual clock. So joint strike here looks like it is the equivalent of joint battles, and I'm not high, high enough level to do those yet, but they unlock at very specific times of day, just like joint battles do in, um, in Langrisser. So that's kind of the, you know, the main grind stuff, like what you would find in Langrisser. There's also, you know, your typical quests and feats, so you do these things daily and you get your daily um, achievements, and then there's longer term things to work towards as well. And of course, on a similar note, we also have events. And now, bear in mind, this is the launch of a new gacha. So, kind of like when I went over my first impressions of Illusion Connect, I mentioned how the game was in its extremely generous mode throwing lots of events at you and lots of free stuff. Like every time you level up, every time you do something, you're getting free stuff. There's login rewards. You know, I log in tomorrow and I get another SR character, Poseidon, who looks really cool. Like that's a cool animation, right? So yeah, they're in the stage where they're giving you all kinds of cool stuff. The game feels really good. And they're also selling a lot of cool stuff, right? So this is their time to get you on board. Like, look how much stamina I have. I'm so overcharged of stamina right now just because from going through the initial steps of getting my account set up, I've been collecting just tons and tons of stamina. Obviously, the other main thing about this game is your hero building. And you can already see some touches that look similar to Langrisser here. 
you have Awakening, which is how you can level up and get new skills. Uh, also, there's a fairly traditional looking gear menu where you can equip gear in these four slots and then upgrade the gear and then ascend it so it can level up to higher levels. Um, I haven't spent tons of time in here yet because I don't really want to sink a lot of resources into these starting characters I haven't summoned yet. And then of course you have shards, so when you get dupes, you can use them to star up your characters. And this protagonist, I called him Kong, but you'll call him whatever your account is called, is kind of like uh, Matthew, Grenier, and Almeida in Languiser, where the higher you star him up, the higher his rarity gets. So when I get him up to four stars, my next star up, he'll become an SR character. And that's fine. Uh, the backpack is basically your inventory, nothing special there. The manual is kind of like a repository of game information, so you can see all the characters, kind of like an Illusion Connect in the Partners menu. You can see the characters that you have. You can also see the characters that you don't have yet, and your shard progress towards being able to summon them. Uh, mercenaries, this is an interesting little implementation of... Now, you have your deployment menu here, which is like your expeditions in Langrisser, but you also have this other thing called quests, and these are basically supplementary or additional battles, and you do these whenever they come up, and they gradually add to your mercenary level. Now, I think these are meant to replace the map events in Langrisser, because there is no map in this game, per se. So these are kind of like the random little event quests that come up during the day. And when you get to higher level ones, I'm sure they'll have some more important rewards. And of course you have your PvP, which is very similar to how it works in Langrisser. And you can see this whole arena page looks very familiar if you're a Langrisser player. So it seeds you with uh, three random opponents. And they're meant to be someone who's more powerful than you, someone who's about the same power level as you, and someone who might be a little bit weaker than you based on your rating. And in the exact same way that Langrisser works, you can choose one to challenge. These are kind of like your arena tickets up here. I've used all mine already, so I would have to recharge if I wanted to use more. And then you can challenge them, and when you do challenge them, you can pick either auto battle or manual battle. And if you auto battle them, just like in Langrisser, you get double the rewards, and you gradually build up this meter at the bottom, and that's how you get your just kind of one-off rewards. But then, of course, there's rewards for your ranking as well. So the higher up the ranking you get in your AI arena, the more rewards you get on an ongoing basis as well. So that is pretty much straight out of the Langrisser playbook, and you're also rewarded with these honor badges. I'm not going to go through all the different deals and events and shops that are available right now, because I think I'll save that for another video, because there's a lot in there, to be quite frank. So I think I'm going to actually leave this little first pass-through right there for now. It's very straightforward. You know, you have all the traditional game modes that are in Langrisser. I found it really interesting that the Secret Realm is kind of reproduced and just rebranded almost in its entirely here. Um, in addition to the timed events, there's also these special events, and this is kind of like what you'd consider a true event. This is a launch event, where you can get free shards for this Alice character. Kind of like one of the uh, Langrisser Secret Realm, like the Halloween event. The, that kind of thing will happen in here. Uh, so yeah, that's... It's all very straightforward so far. It's kind of fresh and glossy looking. Um, most of the game modes that I've shown you in this video are very Langrisser looking. When we get to the next video, when I start looking at the events and the perks and the shop stuff, it starts to look a little bit different. It starts to look a little bit more like a modern gotcha, something that you might expect to see from Illusion Connect, for example, with all kinds of different monetization methods, uh, and different just ways to hook you along and get you moving through progressive quests. So we'll take a look at that in the next one. And I'll also be doing a summoning video separately because there are several summoning banners here. I'm not sure what kind of rotation these are on. You can see these uh, first few are lasting for the next two weeks. 
And then there's some other banners, like the standard banners under that. So I do have whatever free resources I managed to scrape together from doing story mode and stuff like that so far. So I will do a separate summoning video as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that probably very soon because I'm going to want to start summoning characters so I can start making some real progress. Anyway, yeah, that's just a kind of first impressions from a Langris or veteran, from someone who is a, a tactical fan, just coming to this game out of curiosity, someone who's played a lot of Zilong's last game, just to see what it looks and feels like. And it does feel very familiar, it does feel very comfortable so far. The gameplay's fairly different, but, you know, it's standard gacha RPG fare, and I find the UX, like the overall apparatus, the framework holding the gameplay up, can be honestly the thing that makes or breaks whether someone is going to start playing a new gacha game. That and how the summoning feels, if it feels really rewarding. And we'll find out about that in the next one, so wish me luck. Yeah, that's my first impressions, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.